and welcome to the Susie Homesteader channel and today it's getting real close to winter time here so I got to finish skirting a double wide trailer uh, that I haven't finished skirting yet and I'm gonna go through a couple steps with you on just kind of how to wrap that up now here in the Rockies uh, most of the skirting that I like to use is a metal roof panel for the end uh, material on the skirting and we're also going to use like a blue board, uh, rigid foam insulation, and a framing system behind that. Um, and that, again, is because I don't like doing things twice. And we're also going to have a lot of snow sitting up against uh, the side of the skirting. So, again, here in the Rockies, um, I don't like using plywood or T111 or sometimes even that vinyl siding. Uh, they also make a concrete siding. I'm sorry, skirting and all kinds of different materials now um, just to skirt trailers. Uh, but my preference is the metal and uh, that's something that just has very little maintenance and you don't really have to um, continue to update too often. Um, but before you even get to starting to skirt a trailer, um, you're going to need some other things which might include some big gap filler or a fire, black, uh, fire block gap filler. Um, and these are two materials that I use a lot of just to make sure that before you even start the skirting, you have all your pipes and all the holes that your plumbing and your pipes are going into completely sealed up. So another dilemma you have with uh, underneath your trailer is definitely critters and mice and anything that can still dig underneath any kind of a skirting that you have. Um, so you still have to make sure that before you even start your skirting, you've got every hole you can possibly find underneath here sealed up. So uh, obviously this building's been here for a little while, which is why I have all this grass in the way. Um, and apparently I need to weed eat that, but um, you know, assuming you have everything underneath your trailer completely uh, sealed, and you may even have to get something like a foam pipe insulation, uh, which is almost like a pool noodle. It's the equivalent of kind of like a pool noodle material um, that would go around some of your water pipes. Uh, and they also make a heat tape, which is also something you can wrap around your um, plumbing if you feel like your skirting is still um, gonna possibly let in drafts. So the biggest dilemma you have with skirting is number one, uh, critters getting underneath it and into any kind of little holes or insulation that you have under your trailer. And the second one is drafts. So even the tiniest draft uh, coming from underneath that skirting up against any of your pipes um, can cause them to freeze. So uh, lots of options. You can also actually put a uh, fire safe heater, which they do sell um, for underneath trailers in particular uh, to keep uh, the pipes from freezing all winter long uh, that you can even uh, attach to a thermostat inside your house if you have that hooked up correctly. So lots of ways to still keep things from freezing underneath your skirting, um, but that's another video. And today we're really just gonna focus on how I like to skirt a trailer. This trailer on this back side, this double wide, it's about 50 feet long. So when you're figuring out your materials lists, um, that's gonna be about five, 10 foot long frames. Or you know you can do that into multiples of 12 foot frames if your dimensions are different, but 50 feet, and so therefore I'm going to do uh, five sections of 10 frames because that's the easiest way for me to do this by myself. So this is again an example of a 10 foot long frame, and of course I have three feet at this end that's going to go all the way to this corner of the trailer, and then because of the ground level, it's going to slope down to about. Uh, 28 inches or two and a half feet ish at this end. So that is how you will build your frame And your frame of course has got to absolutely be treated lumber on the bottom um, And you can do the entire frame uh, In a treated treated lumber if you want to but it's gonna be more expensive But make sure that bottom piece is a treated piece of lumber And then what I like to do is just the rest of it a regular just a two by four um, pine so, um, and then the other 
uh, suggestion I have is that you do every two feet on center on your framing so that uh, if you do make a crawl space anywhere in this, which we will, uh, you'll be able to fit stuff through there if you have to get in. And um, every two feet, again, on center is kind of a, a good idea to do. And then double up your frames on the, on the corners so that you have a little bit more uh, uh, structure there. Uh, another thing some people like to do, especially if you don't have a lot to screw into underneath your trailer, um, you know, like if you're on the other side where you have a beam, a metal beam, which we'll go to in a minute, and there's no place to screw in underneath, um, you can always drill holes into the bottom of your treated piece and pound some little short stakes into that, into the ground and into your actual treated piece of lumber on the bottom. So um, lots of ways to make the, these frames more secure if you have nothing to screw into. Uh, and in my case, I'm also even going to dig these down a little bit, maybe just an inch or so, uh, into the dirt just to make that a super nice tight fit. You have your frames built ahead of time based on your measurements. Um, this is kind of an idea of how it's going to look. Now, on this side of a trailer, we have problems with these metal beams. So depending on how your trailer was brought in, or your cabin, or your building, um, a lot of this you'll have to build based on the... Uh, where your beams are set up. Um, and so in this case, I couldn't even get all the way up to the top. So my frame is gonna be beneath the metal beam. Um, and then I did have to use some shims or just any kind of a little you know, piece of plywood or soffit that you have um, if there's some differences in the way that, um, that fits. So basically you're gonna do whatever you gotta do to get these frames to just sit in there nice and tight. Uh, this is a good, trailer for me to show you as an example because it was built very poorly <laughs> or at least the siding was put on very poorly so this is a good example of how things can go uh, so whoever put on this board and batten siding uh, obviously didn't do the greatest job so I can cut this all off on the bottom if I want to make a straight line um, or what I think I'm going to do is just kind of pull out this trim and tuck a bunch of my metal underneath and behind this trim which I'll show you down at the other end uh, but again, this is a very uneven uh, siding. Hopefully the trailer or the cabin that you have has, whoever did that siding for you has made it a lot easier for you so everything's nice and straight and even. Uh, but this is what happens when you have a metal beam in the way. So you put your framing underneath it and on the other side, I, we didn't have this beam, metal beam, so it went all the way up to the top of the uh, the 2x4 that's on the inside of this uh, siding um, to tuck that up uh, behind the siding of your trailer which is usually the way they design that those si that siding on a trailer so that you can tuck everything up behind it and the reason for that is because when you're thinking about the rain and the snow coming down you don't want anything to get behind it so try and tuck everything you can behind whatever kind of siding that they've put on the cabin or you know in my case I'll have to pull these these trim boards out a little bit just to tuck it in underneath. Uh, but this, in my case, it worked out perfectly because this two inch tucks in perfectly right up inside there. Uh, but a lot of people will put their, uh, their rigid foam right inside these bays. So you can do that or you can do both. So you can put your rigid foam insulation inside these bays, which I think I'm gonna do right here in front of my water line. And then I'm gonna put another piece over that, just in some of these places where my water line is real close to uh, the exterior. So a couple different ways you can do that, but here you see an example how I just went over the entire frame itself, and then I'll also cut a piece out and put it here. So two ways to do your insulation. I don't suggest using the pink fluffy fiberglass insulation because all that does is create a home for bugs and mice. So if you have to use that, you can, it is cheaper. Uh, but if you do use the pink fiberglass, you're going to have to put uh, visqueen on both sides of that too. So you'd have to visqueen the back side of your frame, put your pink fluffy stuff in there, and then you'd have to put uh, visqueen over the front of that too. So that's a lot of work and a lot of stapling. So this uh, blue board is super easy, um, and again it is for below freezing temperatures. So um, easy to cut, you just cut it with a skill saw, just like you cut any kind of piece of plywood and it works great. So that's how the bluebird board works. And then, here's an example of your metal roofing that you're gonna put on on top of that. Um, now, 
in my case, like I said, I'm going to be tucking this in behind this piece of trim here, um, just because the board, the board and batten is so uneven behind it. Um, but you, depending on how your trailer is sided, you may be able to just put it right on top of the, the siding itself. You just have to make sure that it's tucked behind something so that if the water hits it, nothing goes behind it. Um, and then, you know, that's exactly how that's going to sit on the front, on the front of that blue board. But these roofing panels usually come in three foot sections. Um, so ideally, if you can make your crawl space uh, anywhere between two and three feet and no more than that, then you won't have to order extra pieces because you want to stay at least three feet or less. So in my case, a lot of these are like right around two and a half feet. Um, and then I have one corner that is actually three feet long, so, or high. Um, so this is great stuff. And then you just get your roofing screws. Um, and then you're going to need some longer roofing screws because you got to try, you got to get into this uh, insulation board as well as the framing behind that. So you'll need some longer roofing screws uh, depending on how thick you're going into. So there's a couple ways, like I said, for you to, to do your uh, skirting. And then you may have to notch some areas out when you hit some pipes and stuff like this. Uh, but for the most part, it's a pretty easy concept, easy to do. Um, I know some people will take some extra dirt after they've got everything sided and push that up against the bottom of the metal uh, just to keep out more critters. And then hopefully your double wide has settled or your trailer has settled before you did a lot of this so you won't get too much movement or too many gaps over time with your skirting. So there you go. That's a couple of steps for you, the way I like to do skirting here out in the Rockies. Uh, if you have any questions, come see me on my website, Susie Homesteader of the Rockies. And we'll see you there. Bye-bye. So let's get started. Subscribe to the Susie Homesteader channel, and we'll see you there. Bye-bye.